I was an optimist from the very beginning, um, and that I, I knew the rovers uh, were well built, and that as long as we survived landing, that we had a, a very good chance of an extended mission. For Opportunity, things uh, went well from the very beginning. When we landed, right within uh, a short distance of the rover was exposed bedrock. And when the scientists examined that bedrock in detail, they determined that it was laid down in water some three and a half to four billion years ago. So this was the first evidence of ancient surface water on Mars. It's something that uh, the scientists were looking for, and it was right there where they landed. So uh, they couldn't have asked for a better spot. Well, I think the greatest uh, accomplishment of Eagle Crater was uh, they saw things that uh, look like blueberries. And uh, these are things that are little uh, tiny balls of uh, material that uh, look like something that was um, produced in the uh, presence of water. And so this was one of the first uh, indications that uh, there had been water on Mars in the past. And so I think that was one of the greatest uh, accomplishments. Craters are great for the geologists because they're like time tunnels. They're big holes in the ground, and by going down into the crater, you're essentially going back in time because you know the older rocks are towards the bottom. Opportunity is the crater exploring rover uh, on this side of the planet. Endurance was exciting because uh, this is the first big crater we had entered. That's something we never thought we would ever do with a rover because it was considered too dangerous. So we actually had to do some additional work here on Earth to verify that it was safe, not only to go down into the crater, but that we could get back out again. At times, we've reached slopes about 30 degrees and, and slightly higher. It's actually hard for people to walk on 30 degree slopes. We had a lot of close calls where, you know, we'd, we'd be driving a particular location and we'd start sliding, and then we'd try to go back up and we'd slide. And there's a certain point where if you keep on sliding, you know, you may never get out. It was uh, a little nerve-wracking, but they, they determined it was worth going in there because uh, scientifically it was so interesting. Our big uh, crater was Victoria. It's a half-mile diameter crater that took us about two years to, to reach. And uh, it was exciting because we've never uh, been to a uh, crater quite that large. And we had to find, at first, a safe place to go into this crater. Well, for us, actually, it was a little scary, to be perfectly honest. Imagine going to the edge of the Grand Canyon and looking over, and then here you are, you're commanding a rover to go to the very edge. And as a mission manager, you're responsible for the health and safety of this rover. And so the scientists say, go closer, go closer, because we want to see what's at the very edge. You have to be very careful about getting as close to the edge as you can, but not falling over. The greatest threat to opportunity survival was a global Martian dust storm. And these are massive storms. I mean, they block out the sun. It was quite a, a surprise because, you know, we hadn't seen anything of that magnitude before. Um, and so it was, it was very stressful at that time. And we, that was actually right before we started our ingress into Victoria Crater. That was very scary because during that period, you know, the cloud got very dark. And since we're a solar powered vehicle, um, our, our power got very low. So there was about a two week period where it was touch and go every day and we didn't know whether we'd come in the next day and the rover would still be there. But it, it rode out the storm, it got through it, the skies cleared and, and the rover was fine. Opportunity will be leaving Victoria Crater and heading to an even larger crater. This is called Endeavor, and it's 20 kilometers in diameter, so it's about 12 miles in size. And it's about 20 kilometers away, so you know, another 12 miles in distance. So it's actually further away than all the driving that Opportunity has done in the past five years. So it's a, it's a very distant objective, it's a very ambitious objective, but scientifically, that's the direction to head. Even if we don't reach this uh, new, larger, giant crater, uh, the science that we can do along the way will add to the Martian history books. It'll extend our, our historical understanding of the geology on Mars.
I think the, the great contribution that these rovers have made is that they have made Mars a familiar place. The images that we take are taken very much with a human perspective because the cameras on the rover are right up about eye level for a, a person standing on Mars. And so you get the, the perspective as if you were there yourself looking over these great vistas. With five years of operation for, for both rovers and all the images, you know, the over a quarter million images that have been returned, have really made Mars uh, seem like our neighborhood. It's no longer an, a, a foreign or alien or distant world. It's now a familiar place that has Earth-like characteristics. We love the rovers as if they're our own children because it's gone through so much, it's accomplished so much, it's gone through hardships, it's gone through incredible victories. And so, you know, we love the rovers, we care about them, we worry about them, uh, we're excited when it makes new discoveries. Um, they're amazing vehicles.